I'm Zana from Fantasy Fox. Now for Lark Luxury, I'm going to try and add as many things into a list on the side here and try and go through all the ones that basically give a bit of an explanation as to why I think these should be added to the list for what they are and why they make make your life a bit easier at LARP. Obviously these things can be bought at any time during LARP. I'm not saying if you're on a budget you can't have some of the things that are on LARP Luxury. It's just me trying to help people by showing them everything that you could bring to a LARP event and where I feel that it's easier to denominate is where you are in life sometimes. If you're a student at uni, you're not necessarily gonna have all the money to put into buying a really fancy tent, a really fancy like in-character kind of setting. Like it, it, you don't have to have all the money. You sometimes just need time to build up your collection of things. Um, so enough rambling again, I'm gonna go through all the things that I haven't mentioned before on the last two lists. But also any explanations as to why I, I haven't changed the names of some of these things but need further explanation as to why they are a luxury. So first of all, a tent. For me, lot luxury is some sort of canvas tent. I have recently bought a five meter bell tent um, that I'm planning on reviewing as soon as I'm allowed to go camping. <laughs> and. I find that to be quite a luxury over an out of character plasticky kind of tent. I personally have more than one tent. I have an out of character one and an in character one. It's just my preference. My bell tent cost me a lot more than my out of character one did, but I I feel that they're good for different reasons. If you do have a bell tent or some sort of Dutch tent or whatever, you could potentially have an inner that you that could add to the niceness of the tent, keep some more of the warmth in or whatever. Tent inner, yeah, hands down. I haven't got one, I wanna get one. Again, with the bed situation, air bed, camp bed, it's up to you. Some people I know do a camp bed, air bed combination where they have the camp bed and they put air bed on top and there are loads of blankets and it looks really snug. Futon, mattresses also work quite well. Those are all things you could do or you could get someone to make you a bed in a box which is something that I've seen before that's quite luxury you could build your own bed that can be collapsible um that could all look really luxury and if you're lucky enough to own quite a big car slash van slash truck uh you uh, and I wouldn't suggest bringing a truck <laughs> you could bring like a normal bed and put it inside your bell tent this is usually known as glamping and you can see it on quite a lot of sites or if you are even luckier than some of us who have a tent and you have a caravan or are able to go to a and b or a hotel, I find that quite luxury because you don't necessarily have to bring all the things that are on this list. Uh, some of the things you do still, uh, and I haven't really included you in this because I don't know what would be included because I don't have a caravan. It's the dream. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some people do have caravans that they bring along and they, they work from that. Some of them have a tent in a box. I don't know how to explain it. If you are bringing an airbed, bring an air pump. Makes sense. Camping trolley for me is something I need to get desperately. When you start accumulating the kit that you do when you've been playing a game for so many years, you start to realise how much you need a trolley to get stuff across site and it makes it a bit easier if for example, you're not allowed to drive your car immediately to the place where you're going to be camping. Getting your stuff from one place to the other when you're not allowed to bring your car somewhere, a camping trolley is really, really helpful. Um, they can be a little bit pricey and fall apart quite easily, but if you look for ones that have quite decent wheels, um, they are very, very good. And I really recommend getting a camping trolley. I'm going to be getting one as soon as I can. Next thing that I'd add to my list that I'd say is lot luxury is uh, a tent heater and obviously the gas bottles that go with it. This obviously heats up your tent at night rather than relying on lots of bodies and blankets and stuff. However, you could still have all of those things and a tent heater. 
I personally have had a couple in the past and I I find them quite dangerous. I'm not a massive fan of them, but that doesn't mean to say that they're not good. I have had one before and I absolutely love using it until it broke. It's just one of the standard ones. Uh, it just kept me warm at night and you'd have to turn it off before you fall asleep because otherwise it, you could burn your tent down. So you have to be careful with that. But I would say a tent heater is quite luxurious. Next on the list is a pair of, is your boots. The boots you wear during LARP are really important. It, it's not always the style that's important. A lot, a lot of people make the comment of kit stops from the ankle down. Having a pair of boots that are really supportive, waterproof, all that kind of fun jazz that help keep your feet like happy whilst you're doing all this walking, all this standing. You need to make sure that you have invested in a, a quite a decent pair by this point, whether it be snow boots or just really decent like walking boots. I've personally got a pair of Magnums. Magnums. Um, they are really helpful. They support my ankle. They're waterproof. They they're just great. I love them. Um, I know people who have bought snow boots, who, which are exactly the same, but it's just about keeping your feet happy at that point. The last thing I want to add to this list is actually a table for your tent. Not, not all tents can obviously hold that kind of amount of space, but I imagine by the time you're at luxury, you've got a fairly decent sized tent. A camping table in my tent has been really, really helpful, keeping all my beds in one place, keeping all my makeup in one place, having my mirror stand somewhere. Even in my four meter bell tent with two of us in it and all of our stuff, I can still fit in a table for at least something. It just holds stuff and is very helpful. That I would call quite luxury because we didn't always have that option in my tents uh, or in our tent, sorry. But yeah, I find, I find it quite important. In terms of the LARP luxury things that I would have added to the list for the in-character stuff, a lot of it is just building on whatever you have now. In terms of basic kit, for example, I did not start out with this kit for Katya, uh, for my Empire character. I didn't have this, uh, the shirts are different. I, ha I didn't have this suede coat and this skirt. I originally borrowed a skirt from a friend who was playing and bought a new dress basically for her character. A different shirt which had lots of embroidery on it and stuff which was really really nice and it was quite floaty even though it was really hot that event. It was essentially just a shirt and a skirt with some leggings and some boots and I didn't really wear or have much else with me other than my leather bag. I might have worn my belt but I doubt it. Um, this character obviously she's still around but she just has different shirts. Some are embroidered some aren't. I've got a waistcoat and a skirt that matches. I've got accessories. Like it's it's all about building on what you've got. Like now I have a basket which I bought for this character, which is now being used at multiple systems because it's just very very handy to have about. Uh, especially as uh, my character likes to sell things and she likes to buy things. So she has a little crochet bee that she's made. I've made letters for my other half. I have a fan in here, uh, I keep the book in here. Because she's an apothecary or otherwise known as an alchemist, I have like an alchemist book here. Yeah, and there's just some bits in there that I, I try and keep handy and I, I wear that with it. And people will then know who I am because I'm quite distinguishable because of the things that I've built upon. Not all LARP needs to start with your kit being the best that it could be build on it slowly, even if it's your out of character stuff or your in character stuff. If you're doing icy makeup, make sure if you're doing any kind of scars or kind of like marks on your skin, that you don't do it with stuff like super glue that's gonna harm your skin. Make sure you buy things that are appropriate and like they are SFX kind of makeup. If for example, you wanna play a cat bee skin. My friend did a really excellent job at doing a cat kin with just normal makeup on her face and a bit of setting spray. I think it's really, really fantastic. I'll try and insert a picture if I can, but also maybe look into doing snazaru if you're able to. Make sure you put a base down so that snaz does not stay on your face forever, says the girl who had an orange half face for quite a long time. 
orange face for like this part of my face forever. If you can afford to spend into SFX makeup, maybe look at alcohol based paints for your makeup. Maybe look at ones that might not wash away so easily like stairs um, or normal makeup. Those are things to consider. I think that is everything that I was going to talk to you guys about what, what to pack. I will try and leave a link to the tick list in the description below so that you can have access to it so that you're able to print it off or do whatever you want with it. Uh, you're welcome to kind of copy it and put it into your own document so you can adjust it to what your character needs rather than just a generic list. I hope this was really helpful to you guys. Uh, if you did like it, please give my video a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel for more content relating to LARP. My social media, which is at fantasyfox underscore x. So if you could please give that a follow and then you can find out when the next video is due to happen. And I hope to see you next time. All right, bye.